Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with chapter 2 out of 3 of the brilliant Tell Me Why, developed by Don't Not Entertainment, published by Xbox Game Studios, and at the minute is available right now on Xbox Game Pass, so once again, I tell you, get Game Pass, get Game Pass, get Game Pass, get Game Pass, man that's quite hard to say a couple of times in a row. But sadly, as it is released by Xbox Game Studios, a PS4 release is highly unlikely, unfortunately. So first of all then, as we go into chapter 2, you'll have to press continue when you're in the game. That will take you to the Microsoft Store, and that is where you can actually install it. For one, just in case you don't know where you're going. Um, but as I said then, chapter 2, Family Secrets. This one is chapter 3, will be released on September the 10th, so that is another cracker to look forward to. But, you know, again, there's not much difference in terms of gameplay. A lot of the sequences do seem to be a little bit more time, as in you get about five to seven minutes to sort of look around before a character decides to talk so that we can finally move on. few puzzles again and achievements, but again, they are, they are all easy enough. And, of course, the five collectibles, and they will all be time-stamped below. But the first seven minutes or so is just all cutscenes, so once again, I shall leave you to enjoy. But... Let's get another 500 gamer score in ye old bank of gamer score, shall we? Once upon a time, also, during this one cutscene, there will be no sound for a little bit. That is just because of the copyrighted issue with the song playing in the background. The crafty goblins did everything together. Until one day, when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived. Blamed for the darkness, Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest, while his sister had to stay behind. Ten years later, they were finally reunited, and together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. Though they sought the help of their friends in the forest, they found that no one wanted to delve into the long-gone past. This is how the goblins found themselves alone in the woods, trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. We should play Compass and North Star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. <laughs> you be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> All right, who wants ice cream? Me! Eat up. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone. And with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. And her title. I don't like that story. There were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. Not me. <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, Mom. I love you, too. Sleep well and dream, my doves.
What a waste.
No. We're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on. Up. My numbing labor's a great way to forget your troubles. Uh, can't we just have coffee instead? No. On your feet, soldier. Let's take a break from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough done, I'll drive you into Also, I know the Backstreet Boys tell me why has been done to death, but HM in my last video actually told me an another better song lyric with a classic tell me why. Oh, tell me why do we build castles in the sky? I'm going to stop singing here because my voice is goddamn atrocious, but I wonder what song we can get for, tell me for lyrics tell me why in the third chapter. So anyway, as we begin, straight away then, go to where Tyler is. He's going to bend down, take a look inside the cupboard. We're just going to place a sticky note on his back, and that is going to be our first achievement already done. And immediately then from here, what we can do, we're going to find a collectible. So it's in the next room, uh, just underneath the dining table. You're going to have a look. There will be one for look and another option for look under. So look under that and then grab the collectible from under there. That is obviously the first collectible out of five again. Is that gum? Oh, I guess that was probably me. But this, I believe, is a sort of first time sequence where we got to wait about seven-ish minutes. So we're going to have a look at both of the tables and basically you get to decide whether you want to keep it, sell it, trash it off, obviously do whatever you want. It might have a little impact in the third chapter, but it certainly has no impact in this chapter. Um, obviously, there's going to be another bunch of memories that we, we are going to be looking at as well, but I do believe that you do have to wait a, a few you know about a minute or two etc before Tyler decides he's ready to move on and I think this sort of happens about two or three times in the story but it's not that long at all so uh here we go then so Tyler's on about a smell so we're gonna take a look at our first memory now of the second chapter so if you remember what to do you press the right trigger to get it up and then press and hold the a button to remember and Sam, the good-looking homeless man right there. Getting a skunk out of a barn. He's a nice dude. Sam. Oh, stinky pants, Sam. Come on now. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. All she needed was a little nudge to get her on her way. So, after that's done, now we can go towards the fridge and take a little look inside and say, Phew, fair play, this bad boy can fit so many Boris Johnsons in it. BAM! British politics joke, oh yeah. And for anyone that doesn't know, uh, during the sort of elections and everything, Boris Johnson, Britain's Prime Minister, hid in a fridge to avoid questions. That's, yeah, that's the that's what we got to deal with. I mean, Americans know Donald Trump's in charge over there, so... <laughs> We're in this together, you guys. We are in this together, you guys. Anyway, so once that one is done again, Tyler's going to have a little walk around. But all we can do for the moment, I'm pretty sure that's what we have to do to uh, progress the story, is literally interact with everything in the downstairs. You can have a look upstairs as well. Um, but again, if you just want to get through the story a, a little bit quicker, just take a look at everything downstairs. Have your little chats with uh, Tyler boy there. And we are golden nuggets. Yeah, it did. I won it at that little Halloween carnival they had at the school every year. You grabbed it and hid it in the pot. Then when I tried to get it back, you said there was a snake inside too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I think I remember the snake part, but you... Ugh. Gross stain is gross. Ugh. What happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys. Forgetting that they would, eventually, be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. Well, I seem to recall a time you stole an egg, put it on the couch, and sat on it because you wanted a pet chicken. We don't talk about that. 
Uh-huh. Well, at least I didn't do the thing. Lasagna! Lasagna! Finish your salad first. Thank you, Tessa. You're a lifesaver. No, oh, don't worry about it. There's leftovers from the restaurant. What about Volcano? She needs to eat her lunch, too. Oh, you're quite right, love. Uh, she can have my corn. <laughs> Here you go, little one. You must be hungry, too. <laughs> Tessa really did keep us all fed. She always tried to take care of everyone. Still does, I guess. I guess it's finally time to take these pictures down. Yeah, still deciding what to do with them. I mean, most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but... But not really. I get it. It's just weird seeing myself like that again. Damn. Didn't think a picture could throw me like this anymore. I'm sorry. That sounds really rough. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm like a thousand times better. But I've got a ways to go before I'm comfortable taking my shirt off. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, totally. Just so you know, I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks. All right. What's your verdict, Ronan? You know what? I'll keep a few. To remind us how far we've come. Oh man, I love this one. <laughs> Why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face? Come on, smile. Like Allison. Come on, honey, smile. Like Allison. Now hold up your fish. It's not my fish anymore. Allison stole it. My sister, the fish thief. <laughs> you were just being bratty. Was I, though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. Eddie, now. Take your time. He's not going to jump up and do the cha-cha. What about me? I want to clean the fish, too. It's not even your fish. You didn't catch anything. Ugh. Only because you wouldn't stop talking and scared all the fish away. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Allison, when we're done with this, you can take over to the other side. That sounds fair? Yes. You're right. I was kind of being a brat. Yeah, so as I said then, I mean, we're still, we've done all the memories, we've had a little look around. Um, if Tyler still hasn't said anything, just, <laughs> just walk away. He's basically going to ask us to clean up the coffee table. And that is where we'll be able to progress the story and get our next achievement. There he is then. So if you've absolutely done everything, sort of have a walk around in the kitchen and everything. But when he asks you to do that, go to the coffee table. And before we clean it up, if you take a look directly underneath said table, there will be um, one of those toys which you turn it upside down and then it makes a noise. You can talk to him if you want to, but to be honest, it's probably better to just keep pressing the A button until he finds it funny. So you have to press the A button on this Moo Cow toy thing around 10 to 15 times. But if you want to get it done just a little bit quicker, don't answer him at all, just don't talk to him, and he'll, and eventually he will say, Damn girl, that's funny. In, in Tyler speak, anyway. 
But yes, so literally just keep going until he says that's funny and then the achievement unlocks and then we can move on he's basically now after this little bit he's going to take a break we are going to join him and then we'll be heading into zikichuan maybe it'll be salvageable with a deep clean yes you are <laughs> having fun are we and finally, I hate to say it, but the couches get a one-way ticket to the dump. No protest here. I think I have permanent knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. Well, then that's it for the living room. You are relieved from your duties. This is getting utterly ridiculous. Hey, Allison, come take a break with me. <laughs> All right, I guess that is pretty funny. Yeah, goddamn, finally that unlocked. Bleeding hell. Yeah, as I said, you can get it a little bit less if you don't talk to him, but otherwise, <laughs> just keep pressing on it for a minute or two. So join Tyler right here, and as I said then, uh, you'll have to pick tea or coffee at the top, and then we'll head into the kitchen where we will be getting our third achievement already. Earl Grey or Chai? Your call. I'm fixing myself a good old cup of joe. Ah, a nice pot of wakey-wakey juice. Papa needs his rocket fuel. I am so glad Eddie came through on the caffeine. Shh, did you hear that? <gasps> the Ice King is sending us a warning. For your punishment, said the Ice King, you shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut! Hear it in the wind! Whoosh! <laughs> huh. Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh, yeah. You're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. <sighs> I still think my dark and twisty version was better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. I think they're all still in the kitchen drawer. We should go take a look. Come check this out. Allison's first drafts. Right. Because I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. I can't believe she kept all these. <laughs> You'd think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that... Maybe Marianne was the princess in the stories? Uh, yeah. She called her bedroom the princess's sanctum, and she was all alone in the woods, in this house, until we showed up. She was. Alone. Right then, so this is where the achievement Guess Who we will be getting right now, and all we're doing is basically matching the drawings of the animals to the personality traits. Um... Now, the quickest way to know this is put the pelican on the left, the moose at the top in the middle, and leave the bear on the right. Talk to Tyler, say you're definitely done, that is where the achievement will unlock. But I think if you take a look through the sort of book of goblins again, and have a, have a deep look at the characters, you can sort of, you are sort of able to tell which one is which. But... Like I said, this is just a cheeky 100% easy achievement guide. So it's Pelican left, Moose at top, 
Bear on right, that's all you have to do. Show Tyler, tell him that you're definitely done and this is where the achievement will unlock. And then just to progress the story, all you have to do is take a look at the drawing again, but have a look at the weird, evil, shadowy, mad hunter figure. That will advance the story and then we can move on and talking to um, drunken alcoholic legend that is Sam. Not that I condone alcoholism of any kind, of course. Professionalism and stuff, you know. You better hurry, or the Mad Hunter will catch us! We need to hide. This way. <gasps> what's... What's going on? I... I don't know. I, is he here? Is he really here? Uh, I'm scared. Go away! Yeah! Go back to the forest! I forgot about that. We'd been pretending he was there. And then... Suddenly he was. That was the only time that happened, right? Allison, wait, it felt way too real. It was- Us, pushing our imagination way too far. Uh, Great, hello? Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. Morning, Sam. Well, hi, goblins. I ran into Chief Brown who said you were Starting to clean up on the house this morning, so, uh... I kind of figured you might need some supplies. That's... Thank you. That was very thoughtful. So listen, I, uh... I wanted to apologize for scaring you yesterday. You didn't. Your shotgun did. <laughs> yeah, uh... Well, I, uh... Anyway, I also came by to say I fired up the Google and I, uh... I did some reading. I didn't know the difference between all those words. I mean, I, you know, never been much of a reader, huh? But I think I get why what I said was wrong, and I'm real sorry. Oh, and before I forget, for the lady of the house. It was your mom's favorite recipe. Still make it darn near every week. Think of her every time. Uh, thanks. But we don't have a stove. Still no electricity. Oh, yeah. The fuse box is busted. <laughs> Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But, uh, I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last 20 some years. I'll give you a hand. All right. Box is in the barn. Follow me. We'll be right behind you. Um, is it weird, or does anyone kind of? Like the sort of smell of an alcoholic's breath just reminds you of beer and stuff all the time. No, no, it's, it's not me then. No, it's just probably disgusting. Anyway. Nah, not the best, is it? By the way, um, if, in case you already know, don't go around sniffing alcoholic's breath. It's just, you know, you may get punched or something and nobody wants that. Just thought I'd, just thought I'd pre-warn you. Very much like telling yourself not to inject yourself with um, Dettol or bleach as one President Trump might say. <laughs> so anyway, we are going into the barn as soon as the lads, the steroid infused lads here, open up the door for us. And there's going to be a, a tiny little puzzle for us to do inside. You really helped her out, huh? Oh, you know, just a few chores here and there. I was, I was glad to help your mother. She... I can never bring myself to leave her high and dry. Anyways, let me find that darn key.
Wait. Wait, Sam. You have more of our keys? Yeah. The one for the barn's called a railroad key. See, it's got this special tip that you can... Fascinating. I'll take that off your hands now. Well, I, uh... Figured I might still need to do some maintenance, so, uh... Nope. We're good. Thank you. Uh, fair warning. Door's a bit temperamental. Haven't you been taking care of this place? You didn't oil the doors? What? You think I just hang out here all day or something? Here, son. Give me a try. Good. Okay, when you twist it as far as you can to the left, give it a nice little... <clears throat> Damn it. No oh, shit. Well, I lied, you, uh, you massive, yeah, massive lads. But thanks all the same. So they're going to stay out here. And basically, we've got to turn the fuse box on. Now, there are a set of instructions on the right-hand side. So one is obviously basically just telling you where to put the fuses. There's You literally cannot go wrong with that because there are only six slots anyway. But it is the note from Marianne underneath which has instructions for us telling us what to do and which particular fuses to put in. But of course we're just going to go straight for it and enjoy it. Now there's three different colours on it as well so you cannot get confused. So the yellow is the 20 fuse which we will put on the bottom left first. The uh, 30 is the green one which we'll put on the very top left hand side there. The next one then will be the blue 15 fuses so if you do get confused with the numbers or you can't see the numbers just um put in the different colors there so you've got um yellow 20 at the bottom green 30 on the top left yellow 20 yellow 20 and then a blue 15 fuse on the right that will finish it off activate it and there we are voila seems good Everything okay? You, uh, you two look like you got this all in hand, so, um... Bye. What was that about? Ah, oh, sad Sam is sad Sam. That's sad. But anyway, we have to obviously move on. And this is another one of those sort of weird time sequences where we just have to basically, we'll take a look at everything that's possible in the room. That photo there, Tyler is eventually going to have a look at it and ask who the other woman is in the picture. So there's literally nothing for us to do right now apart from look at things judge harshly potentially if that's the kind of stuff you're into um, <laughs> just take a look around until tyler is ready we'll see make sure to just have a look at everything i'm not sure if looking at everything then progresses the story or if it sort of does it automatically if you just stand still so just take a look at everything anyway and then spilling it on my only pair of shoes then yes <laughs> Hey, it was not funny. Sure thing, B-Boy. Hey there, little buddy. <laughs> Found Marianne's stash. Oh man, I'm gonna put together the sweetest toolbox ever. Huh, look at this. I think this is where she made all her toys.
Found Marianne's stash. Blueberry. Blue Those have definitely gone bad. As far as I'm concerned, they always were. Allison, do you know who this is? What did you find? Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. That's Carol, Eddie's mom. I've seen other pictures of her, but never this one. Man, look at Brown. And Marianne. She looks really happy. Can I? Careful, the glass is Ow! broken. Are you okay? It stings. Let's go see Mom. But she'll get mad. You weren't even supposed to be here. Not to disturb her and Eddie. Oh, aye, and why is that then? A little bit of bump and grind? A little bit of lovey, lovey, love, love, shabadoo, huh? Huh? Eddie? <laughs> you missed to me. Shh. Look. I had to make that call. What were they talking about? I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know, but. I remember that whatever Eddie had to do, whatever that call was about, it was tearing him up. Tearing him up? He was being a total cop, and Marianne got pissed and threw him out. Here, I'm gonna show you what I remember. There, by the house. I had to make that call. I was just following the law. Oh yeah? And this little visit right here? What would the law say about this, huh? Look, I didn't have to come out here, but I did. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Marianne. <sighs> I said get out! Out! What? She didn't throw the picture at him. You sure about that? He was being a complete dick. How can you be sure? We were eavesdropping. We could barely see a thing. What do you think happened then? Look. I had to make that call. I was following procedure. What I'm legally required to do. Then why are you here? Pretty sure this isn't procedure. I wanted you to hear it from me. Please leave. Mary Ann, I'm sorry. Please just go. How do we keep remembering the same thing so differently? It was a long time ago, and, well, memory is a tricky thing. Wait, when did that happen? I, I'm not sure. I think it was the exact same day she attacked you. That's what I thought. Uncle Eddie said he hadn't seen Marianne for weeks. Yeah, that was bullshit. And what was all that about following the law? What was he doing here exactly? He must have had his reasons for not telling us. Look, I know he took care of you, but that doesn't make him incapable of lying. I can't see him being that cold with Marianne. Even if he was being a cop. I mean, I can, but who knows? I guess memory is a tricky thing, huh? So again then, we are just picking uh, one out of the two memories, of course. There is no wrong answer, but of course, picking one will either impair or repair your relationship with Tyler. So, choose whatever you want. It'll improve or deprove your relationship with your brother, so obviously pick. I'd say pick carefully, but you can pick what you want, to be honest. Whatever you think is right. So, we agree. Brown came out here and bullied Marianne the same day she attacked us. And then lied about it. Now what? We go and get a straight answer from him. Right now? Yes. I'll go get my car keys. 
But what will these mountains of trash do without us? Fuck the trash. Man, I can't believe Brown lied. I mean, I may not be the guy's biggest fan, but he's always talking about the truth and the law and shit. Do you have to be so happy about it? What? I know you've been waiting for something like this. Something that proves Eddie's an asshole. But gloating about it is really not cool. Mm. <sighs> it's Tina. I gotta take this. Yeah, j just a sec. I'm parking the car. I'll just go stretch my legs then. No, just give me a sec. Okay, Tina, what's going on? Hi, hon. I've got someone who is super interested in seeing the house. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, when? Sorry, hi, just me again, back again. Uh, this phone call with Tina, the realtor, she's going to basically ask us a question whether we want to sell the house tomorrow or the guy to come and take a look at tomorrow. Um, if you choose now is not the right time, that will actually uh, be good for your relationship with Tyler. Um, but if you want to choose the other one, obviously that's fine, the other option, but I choose the now is not the right time and that means my relationship with tyler gets stronger but again choose what you want but that was just pre-warning you there otherwise go to the top of the mountain where tyler's sitting for another conversation huh well i think i just made tina's shit list looks like you found a nice spot we've been here before right So, Tina? Tina West, our realtor. Oh, that Tina. What'd she need? She had someone who wanted to see the house, but he could only come by day after tomorrow. And you told her no? Yeah. We need more time than that you know, to get things cleaned up and, you know. Thanks. But what if it's the only call we get? And I guess we just grow old and lose our minds in that fucking house. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So, before Tina called, we were talking? Yeah. I'm not happy your foster father fucked up. Oh yeah? Because you sure sounded like he it. He hid information about Marianne. I know! You just don't have to rub it in! I get it. You're always gonna side with him over me. Come on, that's not fair. Then why do you keep doing it? This town, these people, they're just memories to you. But it's my home, Tyler. My friends, my family. And as much as I want answers, I'd rather not lay waste to my entire life to get them. I didn't come here to ruin your life, Allison. I just want some answers. I know. That's why we're doing all this, right? Looks pretty picturesque from here, doesn't it? You're way more attached to this place than you let on. So, you really want to live somewhere super secluded like this? Alone in a cave, speaking for the trees? I do. Is it really that hard to imagine? Oh yeah? Who do you think's gonna come visit you out there, in the middle of nowhere? Well, I was hoping you would. You feeling that, Ty? Yeah. Found you! North Star! Okay, now you're the star and I'm the compass. Okay, 
and don't cheat. I know you were sending me fake hints last time. I did not. Yes, you did. Okay, okay, I won't do it again. <laughs> you were always accusing me of cheating. Because you totally did. It was a cool game. Guessing where you were just by feeling what you felt. No one else could play it with us. That was the beauty of it. For real? You never wanted any other friends? No, not really. I mean, we had each other. That was enough for me. So, not too disappointed I turned down our chance to be billionaires? Nah, all that money would have made me soft. And I've spent way too many years polishing my edgy side. You were right to call me out earlier. I was being a jerk about Eddie. I'm all for enjoying the wins as they come, but maybe not at the expense of my father figure. I'll try my best. Bloody hell, give it you then, soft lad. I wouldn't mind being a goddamn mil billionaire. I mean, apparently you do have to look like a slight alien to get there. I mean, i.e. Jeff Bezos, see the South Park episode on that one, Bill Gates, etc. But that is a risk I'm willing to take. Would have made me soft. Being a billionaire would make me hard, constantly. Poof. Anyway, we are coming up... <laughs> anyway, we are coming up to another achievement now. Before we go into the car, take a little walk to the left. Tyler's going to automatically go to the left anyway. He's going to see a little scratching on a tree. I'm pretty sure this is basically unmissable. Even if you do go into the car, apparently it unlocks anyway. But obviously it's just best to go with the with Tyler to the tree. He's basically going to change it. That will end this part of the game. We will move on. And you get a lovely achievement for it as well. Nice. What are you doing? What I wanted to do back then, but I didn't have the guts. There, looking better already. You're right. Way better. So, what's the plan? We go inside and calmly ask Eddie why he was there that day. All right. Let's try to let him get his side of the story out, okay? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I understand, Mr. Barrow. I'll be sure to let him know. Yes, I have it all written down. So here we are then, back at the police station. We want to be talking to Chief Eddie Brownpants. Um, but it's not as easy as that. There is quite a little bit for us to do. But we are going to be just having a little chat with Chief Brownie first, after all this conversation's done. Tyler, Denise, Denise, Tyler. Wilson, could you tell Officer Vincenzi that I'll be... Oh. Good morning, Allison. Hi, Uncle. I'm going to take Dr. Torres' statement. No need for Vincenzi to come back to the station. He doesn't seem like he's in the best of moods. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but he's been a little off all day. Good luck. Great. He has an excuse to brush us off. I'm sure he'll make time if we say it's important. You know, again, this is a uh, free game, so if you wanted to go and talk to some of the officers and take a look around and have a look and interact with everyone and everything else, of course, by all means, you go ahead and do that. But we're just uh, getting through the game just as quick as we can, so we are just talking to Chief Ed straight away. What's 
going on, you two? We had a few more questions about our mother. Look, now's not the best time. Well, maybe we can come back later then? Excuse me. Come on. Guys, I'm understaffed today. I've got a receptionist out sick, an officer dealing with personal issues. I need to finish taking this woman's statement and I don't have time to chat right now. We were just hoping for some answers. Well, I don't know what more you think I'm going to say. I already told you everything. I need to get back to this complaint. Sorry, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What in the actual monkey nuts is that for a haircut? Man, it generally looks like he had a fight with a lawnmower and lost, or like his barber is seriously pissed at him or something. I mean, it looks like a beaten up Greg's pasty or a country on a globe or something. Look at it. He's got a buzz cut on top, then hair around the side. I mean, I'm not one to judge, of course, but bruh, come on. My pubic region looks better than that. <laughs> Man, look at that. It looks like somebody sort of mowed a bit of the grass and then forgot to do the sides. Oh, gee. Anyway, sorry, uh, I got off track. Um, <laughs> I did get a little bit off track here, so we can't actually go out of the door yet. What we need to do is try and head up the stairs first, and then Officer Crap Haircut is going to tell us what we uh, what are we doing. Then we can actually leave. Man, sorry, that, that haircut has just thrown me for a loop. Does anyone actually walk around like that? I'm sorry. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to cause offense, but I think it's best to go bold. Tyler, help me out here. Oh, uh, yeah. Toilet emergency. Lake water. You know, Mother Nature's juice cleanse. There's a bathroom just past the break room. Behind you. First door on your right. Forget it, Tyler. There's no way we're getting upstairs out in the open like this. It's too suspicious. There must be another way up. Should we just look around? Yeah. Okay. Back room. You head now? So, as we know then, we are trying to get upstairs, but we need to be able to cause a distraction to do that. Uh, there is only one way to get up to uh, Chief Brown Pants' office. If we head to the right directly as we exit the door, Again, you can have a look at the leaflets and on the notice board there if you want, but we are going straight right at the end of this building. Up the stairs, that is where we will find um, just a door, but it can only be accessed from the inside. So that is why we need to cause a distraction inside so Allison can sneak up and then we can move on. You're the troublemaker. I nominate you as the one to make a scene. Wait, really? Not a better idea? Not really, no. Right, let's go. So I think there are a few ways that we can do this, but the most effective is literally the way we're going to do it straight away. Um, I'm not too sure on the other ways because I didn't do it, but we'll... Um, if maybe shaving this guy's head would have been a good distraction, but it kind of looks like an iron, doesn't it? Somebody's ironed his head shut. <laughs> his hair shut, sorry. <laughs> have a look at this light right here. Basically, what we're going to do, again, you don't have to do this way, but it is literally the easiest and most effective. Turning off the light switch, Alison will walk upstairs, and then Tyler will just turn it back on, and that will allow us to go outside. But, um... Yeah, again, take a look at old Iron Head's haircut if you really want to. Of your destiny. Own it. 
So then, now that we are finally in, all we have to do is head to the right, go into uh, Chief Brownie Brown Brown's office, and directly go to the left side of his desk in the drawer. That is where we will get our third collectible of the game, so make sure to grab that before we move on. Again, if you do end up missing any achievements or collectibles, you can literally just replay the chapter, and that will be fine. Um, and, you know, as I said, feel free to take a look uh, around... Sorry, that's uh, only collectible. Two out of five. My mistake. Um, again, feel free to have a look around if you want. All we need to do really is just to go on the computer, have a look at some emails, and then we're good to go. But I do actually have a look at these letters. Um, because you see that uh, Chief Eddie actually lied. Alison went to get into college. Um, Eddie basically told her she got rejected, but she actually got accepted. And I don't know why he's just left that out in the open. And then this is a bill for Tyler's Fireweed Campus. So now Tyler feels like he's in debt, which is never nice. Never, never nice. But anyway, I just I thought I'd have a look, little look at the, the, those two, at least, because I thought they were bloody very interesting. Uh, but interact with the desk. Again, you can have a look. He's basically, Eddie's hiring someone. The gist of it is he's hiring a criminal. Um, whether he comes into play in the future chapter... Well, the third and last chapter remains to be seen. Otherwise, just take a look at the first two emails and the rest if you want. But it's the first two that we need to take a look at. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's been trying way too hard to get it. One of his emails mentioned the archives. That's got to be where our file is. Right then, so to get the code, you have to take a little look around. We're not going to be doing that, so I'm going to tell you the code right now, and that is 6041. You're supposed to sort of, um, Alison's going to tell you a little tune. You're supposed to just re remember it, and anyway, press the obvious four numbers, but it is 6041. Looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining about this. They're gonna have to resort everything. Great. They've digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning? Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half-done sorting system. Yep. This is gonna be so fun for you. I'm gonna go keep a lookout. What? Why do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? Because if anyone sees me, I'll have a better... So then here is a bit of a long-winded section. Basically, what we have to do is find a box with the serial code that we have. The first two numbers and the last three. Then have a look on the computer, combine two tags together to get another code, then search in that box for more information about Mary Ann. So this first box that we are looking for is on the right here, 05R68. Here but that's all we're doing here, so just follow along with the video to find out what sort of boxes we need to search in. Have a read of the information that is there, if you obviously so wish. But again, I'm pretty sure this is another time section, as in we have around seven minutes or so to just look through a few boxes. I mean, don't worry, we literally get all the info we need uh, quite quickly anyway. But don't panic if you're sort of halfway through searching a box and the cutscene begins. Also, we are getting the State Your Emergency achievement here too. So we're going to be going back to the computer now. Eventually, when we put the box back. I mean, come on, son. We haven't got all the time in the world. Boxes aren't that heavy, are they? Well, they might be. But anyway, ignore that box for now. 
uh, just have a look at the computer so as you'll see here then there are only two tags there for now so press A to interact with both of them right bumper to go over to the next screen and then press A again to interact with it well to both of them <laughs> that'll do and that'll again get us another serial number that we need to look for remember it is the first two and the last three numbers and letters that we are looking for so this one is 05R61 so there's the box again have a little flick through that and then what this will do will actually this will actually put more tags for us to look at on the computer and we will be getting the state your emergency achievement when we go back onto the computer next. So after we've done this then, go back onto the uh, cockputer. <laughs> I actually wrote down cockputer instead of computer. <laughs> Funny. And make sure to click on the tags Ronan Children and Recording. Ronin Children in the recording, the second and the fifth options. Click on the first option and then have a little listen to that. That is actually what will unlock us. This achievement, as soon as we back out of the computer, and then all we're doing is just follow along with me until the cutscene begins. That's it. So it's literally have a look, get information, go onto the computer, tag up a couple of things, find another box with more information, and that's all we're doing. That is all she wrote. But the recording is very interesting, really gives you an insight as to what sort of happened. Services with the subject Ronan family. What? There has to be more to this. Just, just keep looking. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Eddie's coming up the stairs. What do I do? What do I do? Stole him. No shit, Sherlock. Tell him you need to talk in his office. Samuel Kansky is a close friend of the family. Uh huh. K A N S. K Y. Great. Your caseworker, Sandy Black, will be arriving on March 5th. She'll drop by the station first thing in the morning. Mrs. Proof, how worried should we be? Mm, I really can't say until I have a full picture of the situation. Of course. Well. References 2014-201-496. Here we go. Not helpful at all. Hmm. Nothing helpful. 
people. Get out. Uncle, I... We didn't mean I'm to... I'm not gonna repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it! H hey! Get off me! Rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky your family. You want to talk about family, Eddie? I guess family calls social services when you're having a hard time, huh? And then breaks the law to gloat that you're gonna lose your fucking kids. It's your fault she lost it, Eddie. You, and Tessa, and everyone else in this goddamn town. Okay. Let's talk. The winter before your mother's death was hard. Devil's Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed and plain supplies were scarce. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. Uh, um, I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. You're saying Tessa reported her mother because she was having supply issues? Tessa came to me because she was honestly concerned. Right. I was legally required to report Tessa's complaint, even if I didn't agree. So you took her word for it and called child services? Failure to provide adequate food, lack of appropriate supervision, Inattention to a child's psychological care? Like it or not, she had a case. What? It's bullshit. Just following the law then. Right. Is that why you came over that day, before she died? You felt shitty, didn't you? That's why you broke procedure? I had to warn her that it was happening and that it wasn't looking good. An assessment worker had been assigned and started doing background checks. What else was I supposed to do? I thought always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. Uh, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Uncle.
Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but you have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past 10 years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. I'm open to getting there, but it's gonna take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. It's hard work rebuilding trust, but you've got a place here whenever you need it. Group hug? Uh, no. Absolutely not. I mean, clearly Chief Brown Pants has been hiding something all this time, and I always think, wouldn't it be just easier to just lay out all the truth so the kids can stop nagging? Like, why does that happen? You hide the truth, and people are going to keep asking you. Come on, just get it out there, son. Just tell everyone the truth. Job's a lot easier then. But uh, anyway, we are done finally now with the police station. We are now going to be heading to the store where we're gonna we're gonna kill Tessa. <laughs> Actually, we're not. But we do need a little chat with her. You feel like shit. How can you tell? Because I feel like shit. What are we gonna do about Tessa? Nothing. Look. We're not gonna do anything. That's enough, Tyler. Talk to Tessa? Why? What are you looking for? What are you expecting her to say? I thought she loved us. Really? Chief Brown, is it true? Is she? Oh my God. Ch children, I... Tessa. Tessa, you need to leave. Come on, kids. Everything is going to be all right. Okay? You're going to be okay, I promise. Go home. You can't be here right now. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Where is everybody? Tessa's gotta be around somewhere. I think I'm hearing something. Well, at least we know the entire world didn't vanish. But given who is here, we can't count out the rapture quite yet. I need to take a breather. I'm gonna do a bit of shopping. You look for Tessa, okay? On it. So here we are in the store again. You can just have a little look around. Go and talk to Mike and the customer at the back if you so wish. But of course, we're just going to knock straight on the office door to the left and go and have a little chat with Tommy Tom Tom Jr. enough signatures. It should have at least been enough to stall construction while we figure out our next move. Well, why don't we schedule a meeting with the Alaska Wildlife Foundation, try to get their support. 
Look, Harold, I have to go. We can pick this up at the meeting. I should be on my way over soon. Hello, Tyler. Uh, can I help you? Hey, I hope this isn't a bad time, but is Tessa around today? She had to step out for a family matter. This wouldn't be something I could help with, would it? Yeah, maybe, actually. Uh, we were over at the police station and we took a look at Marianne's case file. <clears throat> okay. Tessa reported Marianne to social services. Did you know? Vaguely. But I didn't get involved. I, I didn't think I really had anything to add. You never thought to mention it? Well, no. I'm not sure how a thing like that would have come up. And I didn't want to rub salt in any wounds. Huh. How about when we were in the store yesterday asking about it point blank? That was between you and Tessa. I try to stay out of other people's affairs. Okay. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry if you felt... resistance from people around here. To put it mildly. Allison, you know this better than anybody. But your mother's death left a scar on this community. Now, I won't claim we went through anything close to what you did, but it was a cruel reminder of the limits of trust. I guess that makes sense, but we need to know what really happened. You deserve that. And I'm sorry if some folks have been less than helpful, but you've got to give people time. Especially Tessa. Now, you let me know if you have any other questions, okay? Hey. Yes? You said I should remind you not to be late for your meeting, so... Don't be late. Uh, yep. Yep, I'll be on my way in a minute. Uh, so, kids, was there uh, anything else you two wanted to talk to me about? Did you ever hear any rumors about our mother? Like, who our father might have been? Mm, I'm not exactly a rumor monger. Your mother was close to a few men, but whether they were your father, I couldn't say. But look, I, oh, gosh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I really have to go. Uh, Michael, uh, could you finish up the storage room and then just uh, close up? Hey, it's sure thing, boss man. See you later. You two want to help a brother out, spend the afternoon here working for free? Why not? We came here to talk to Tessa, and she's not here. Uh, she, she's at the cemetery, uh, visiting her parents. Oh. Hey, tell you what. Why don't you guys help me close the store, and then we can drive over together. I've been meaning to pay my uncle a visit. Can't we just wait for her to come back here? I, I'm not really excited about going there. Allison, we don't have to visit her grave. I'm going to start working in the storage room. Tyler, join me when you're done. Sure thing. Just give me a sec. So, for some reason then, Allison's deciding to work for free. You'll never, ever, 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 ever catch me doing that. I can tell you that bloody now. But we'll just leave her to her peril. We're going to go into the back room, which is obviously at the back to the right. We're going to have a little chat with Mikey Mike Mike Jr. right here. Big Mike, we're going to call him for now, for some reason. But there are two achievements we'll be getting in here, and our third collectible. So again, just have your little chat with him right here for just two seconds. Go to the back of the room and uh, tell me how many cans of Molto Bene brand tomato sauce we have left. Aye, aye. Right then, so for the first collectible, go towards the fridge behind you, and on the cabinet is our third collectible out of five for this one, the Mangy Muskrat. Oh, that's such a cute name, isn't it? Such a goddamn cute name. 
<laughs> but have a check anyway just to make sure you're on the same sort of path that I am. There we go, three out of five collected so far. But from here we're getting the Remember Strange Vampire achievement for interacting with three posters and each one is like a little Easter egg and a nod to Don't Nod's other games. Um, make sure to do this by the way before doing what you have to do for Big Mike. So the first one then is behind Mike himself and is a reference to Life is Strange but hilariously in the game Mike calls it Life Being Weird. Top stuff. Go to the left now and down the end is another poster which is a nod to the game Vampire or Vampire however you want to say it and that's a nod to the game Vampire and its last boss the Red Queen. Then from there literally go down to the other end of the back room and it is a panda drinking some energy drink which is always normal but that is a reference to Don't Nod's first game Remember Me. After you click these the achievement will unlock and then we can move on with what we need to do. So yeah, top little easter eggs, always enjoyable to see a couple of little easter eggs in there. But now we can actually crack on with our free job, Pfft, free, for Big Mike, Stormzy himself. Well, he's not Stormzy, he's close enough anyway. So anyway, go to the back of the room, close to where we found the um, two posters, sort of in between. Count the molto bene. Bits of sauce, the act, the um, press X, the answer is actually 14. Doesn't matter if you get it wrong anyway. Even though he's asked you to count it, if you click either 12 or 16, he tells you you're wrong anyway. Why did you need my help? Why did you need my help then, bruh? Anyway, go to the next shelf, examine that. The bleach is underneath. There is six bottles of bleach underneath here now. Six? All right. Not bad, Tyler. Not bad. Careful. They might give me your job. Oh, you can have it. Uh, what's next? Come here and help me with this. What's up? I need your opinion on this masterpiece. <laughs> Is that supposed to be me? Yeah, come on. Look at the hair. Nailed it, right? Honestly, it's beautiful. Hey, don't make fun of me. I'm not. Oh, maybe a little bit, but <laughs> I like it. For real. Well, it helps to have a good model. So, this is what you're up to while I was out there doing your work? What can I say? I'm a multitasker. Hey, multitasker? I think you made a mistake here. Total amount should be 36. Oh, how dare you, sir? What? I just don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, you're right. You know, I'm off my game today. Now I'm interested to see what you guys just picked for Big Mike's drawing. I thought he was beautiful. Gotta make him feel good, man. Gotta make him feel good. But we are coming up to yet another achievement then. And it is for the sharp shooter. For hitting Mike three times with plushies before he hits you three times with plushies. This is actually very easy. So count how many plushies are in the back. Close to where you found the mangy uh, muskrat. It's 11, by the way. Um, again, doesn't matter if you get it wrong. He'll just tell you you're wrong anyway. And this is where the achievement begins. So all you got to do is... Uh, you'll both be in cover, hold left or hold right to sort of get out of cover and then you'll have to hit Mike with a target, as you will see here. <laughs> I don't know why he done, done a roll for, but it seemed to work well. Looked very James Bond-esque, mate. So yeah, as you will see, when he comes out of cover, you will have to then put your reticle actually over him and then press the A button to shoot. Um, like I said, he may, he may take a, a, a few... So seconds to come out and everything um, but he's going to change cover so when he goes behind the boxes on the left you should change cover as well it's all very very easy I, he didn't even throw any at me because he's that useless but anyway yeah it, it, it may take a couple of minutes depending on how many times he wants to pop his uh, big old head out who's letting their guard down now one more hit and you're out Prepare to feel my wrath. Oh <laughs> God, you're corny. So, is this a typical workday for you? 
Nah, I usually don't have such good looking company back here. Oh, so I'm good looking company, huh? Yeah, well, don't let it get to your head. I'm still destroying you. Boom. Oh, <laughs> man, you're good. <laughs> I told you not to doubt the golden arm. <laughs> well, we'll never make that mistake again. Okay. I need to finish this inventory thing real quick. Your sister's probably done already. Here. Let's hit the bitch's grotto. The what? Fancy name for the couch where Allison and I sit during breaks. Ah. Alright. Cool. Let me see what you've done with the place. So, it doesn't even matter if he hit you once or twice, as long as he doesn't hit you three times, and you actually win, then... That is that. The achievement unlocks. But again, I... Don't actually know if he attempts to hit you as long as he's staying in cover. It's not exactly a Call of Duty classic, really, is it? To be fair. Um, what you'll have to do for this bit then is have a look around, have a look at the pictures and everything, and then I just clicked on the duplex duo poster to the left of him. Um, and then he seemed to want to have a nice little chat then, so we're going to have a nice little conversation. This is where you can either flirt with Big Mike, or you can reject his advances, because Mike likey likey. And as that son, son of a bitch Paddy McGuinness says, no likey, no likey. I can't believe I just used a reference like that in my video. I'm so sorry. And I'm done. I gotta tell you, it's so weird to finally meet the other Ronan. You mean the OG Ronan? I was born first, you know? Is that so? The Allison said she was. Well, our mother never actually told us, but it was me. So, why is it so weird to meet me? Because I just heard Allison tell your story so many times. She told me everything about you. Fireweed, your transition. I hope that's okay, by the way. Yeah, it's fine. She asked me first. <laughs> yeah, figures. That lady is thorough and she loves you like crazy. I know. So, yeah, uh, you were probably the first person to know about it other than Allison. I'm glad you trusted me. And it's great to finally get to know you in the flesh. You're pretty alright. <laughs> but you're not too bad yourself. I try not to be. Especially around guys I'm trying to impress. So I wasn't blowing smoke when I said you should move to Juno with us. I know. I've got a community there. It could be yours too. Hmm. Fitting in. There's a concept. Y you have no idea how life saving a chosen family can be. They pulled me out of the dark more times than I can count. I hear you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Of course. Shoot. Why do you care so much if I move to Juno? <laughs> Look, like I said, I I want to get to know you. Because I'm just that fascinating, huh? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. You might be one of a kind, Tyler Ronan. Oh, golly gee, Michael. I think you're swell, too. You're the cat's pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I've got way better compliments than that but I can't open with my best, right? It's cool. So, I'll get more of those if I get to know you better? For sure. If that's something you'd be interested in. I might be. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, hey. I've been standing at that counter for an hour waiting for you two dum-dums to come back. Are you guys ready to go? Mm-hmm. I think we've done about as much damage as we can back here. Yeah. Let's... Here we are. I 
Thanks for letting me hit your ride over. No problem. You sure we can't drive you back? Nah. You're like stretching my legs. It isn't far. And anyway, can't put the wind in a bottle. <laughs> All right. Tessa should be at her parents' grave, not far from the entrance. Look for a big, crooked tree. You can't miss it. I'm gonna go check in with my uncle. Good luck. For real. So what did you do then? Did you accept Big Mike's advances or did you reject them? But let me tell you this. There is a reason they call him Big Mike. <laughs> winkle, winkle. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Doesn't matter what you did. But, you know, be nice. Be nice. But we are in the cemetery now. There's sort of not a lot going on at the minute. This is just story related. We'll be obviously um, taking a look at quite a few memories. But we will be getting... We've got no more missable achievements to get, by the way, now. But there are two collectibles left to get. So, yeah, just keep having a look at the memories. Keep on going. Keep getting yourself invested in the story for now. And I'll obviously let you know when we're coming up to another collectible. Mom, why do we always come here? Does it bother you? No. It's just weird because we don't know any of these people. I mean, except Eddie's mom. It never hurts to say hello. Because they're very lonely. That's right, sweetie. And sometimes, even if you can't see them, they stay with you. In here. Always here. Mom? <laughs> Always. She loved us. A lot. But sometimes it was like loving us hurt her. Do you think she was just really scared of losing us? Maybe. Yeah. But well, here's the crooked tree, but no Tessa. Let's check around for her parents' grave. Just to make sure this is the right spot. You think it's possible Michael remembered it wrong? Well, I've done inventory with him before, so... De Leon. That's the one. <sighs> Don't tell me we missed her. Mr. Eagle? Kids. It's time. Okay, then we'll get something to eat. The day of the funeral. I barely remember it. That's probably for the best. I don't think either of us are exactly eager to relive. So then here is the obvious looking gate which we need to get through for story relate related progression anyway. And as we enter, now instead of going straight, you can just see a little opening to your left, a little path going to the left. That is where we will be needing to go as there is a, a that is where the collectible is it's down the left and then there's another pass that goes off to the right and that's where we'll be going um it's next to this sort of plinth i think they're called no plinth no you'll see this big oogity boogity statue looking thing one of them things look so you should be on the right track as long as you can see this Ting, which I can't remember what it's called, but there's a couple of memories here which I'm just going to be getting out of the way first. Of course, we need to do them anyway to get um, through the story a little bit. I won't let them take you away. I'm gonna tell them the truth. You swore, Allison. I'm gonna be okay. Please don't worry about me. I know I'm supposed to get over this brown thing, but I really wish you'd been able to come visit that much. Yeah, me too, but look, I didn't make any promises that day. You did. Watch. They all think you 
killed her. It's not fair. I'll be okay. You have to take care of yourself now. See? It's possible. But I don't think so. Well, I know so. Thinking about it got me... Again, this is a memory choice that you have to pick. Of course, if you choose that you, Tyler, promised to return, then obviously that more or less improves your relationship. But if you said Allison promises, obviously that'll uh, cause a little bit of rife tension between you. But again, choose whatever you would like. All right, promise. Chief Brown's gonna take care of you. We'll be okay. You'll see. So then, from here, we are now good to go, so you can just go down the other path that we have not visited yet. The grave right in front of us is Chief Brown's mother's grave, but directly behind it is where we want to go because we'll be getting, there's a little box that somehow has not moved. Nobody's decided to look in it for 10 years and all the contents are perfectly inside it. Happy days. That's just goddamn beautiful. Take the collectible. Although then again, we have seen with a house, nobody's been in there for 10 years and all there is is a couple of specks of dust. So, you know, things hold up pretty damn well in this town. Uh, but anyway, now we can get the memory right here. You'll just see Marianne having um, a few tears. There will be a little bit of more dialogue between Tyler and Allison, but I edited it out because I went on a tangent and... I don't know what the hell I was doing, so be aware there's a bit more dialogue there. But go directly behind you and down the hill. Do not go back the way you came. I mean, it just takes longer, that's all. So down the hill, we'll now be visiting Marianne's grave. It's basically directly in front of us. And it is the one on the very left-hand side next to the sort of triangle-looking grave thing there. And again then, get ready for a long cutscene. And this is where we can either forgive or not forgive Tessa. So again, another important decision to make here in Just In Time for Chapter 3. Allison. Is that her? What the hell was going on with you? What? Broke? Expecting to see. What are you? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Feeling a little guilty, maybe? pass on. Our graves are all anyone has to remember us by. Letting hers just fall apart would be cruel. I'm not a cruel person. Cruel enough to call social services on her mother. I... I, I wanted to protect you. Marianne was getting worse all the time. I was afraid that if things kept going the way they were, then one day... We were going to end up dead? Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the whole story back in the store, but I didn't want you to, to- Enough with the excuses. What the hell happened to her? Why'd you turn your back on us? Your mom was always just barely getting by, and over the years she burned a lot of goodwill. It got so bad, no one was willing to hire her, and the stress of that, well, it, it took its toll. I tried to help, but she pushed me away. She pushed us all away. In the end, she isolated herself from everyone. She was alone and out of options. She had us, until you threatened to have us taken away. I couldn't let her drag you down with her. 
She had you stealing for God's sake. Your mother never wanted to be a part of this community. She always thought she was better than the rest of us. A spoiled little girl playing fairy princess in the woods. If she just settled down with someone instead of running around with married men, well... Just ask Sam Kansky how much better that would have been for everyone. Wait, what? I... Oh, God. What happened between them? I, I wasn't thinking. Please, just forget I said anything. Tessa. All I know is whatever went on, Laura left Sam over it. But I shouldn't have said anything about that. I promised I wouldn't. I'm sorry, kids. You were worried. And you did what you thought you had to. Get it? We both do. The situation was so fucked that, well, there probably wasn't a good answer. Thank you. I... I... No. I could have done more. Marianne was fragile. She needed help, and I... I failed her. It's my fault. She's gone. I know I've made mistakes. All I can do now is say that I'm sorry. If I could give you back your mother, I would. I don't deserve your forgiveness, especially yours, Tyler. But if there's a place for me in your lives, I'd like to be there. I have to know something first. Are you good with who I am? I've been thinking about that since you came home. I believe that my life is better for having lived it by God's word. But I also believe we don't always understand what he's saying to us. I pray for guidance. And seeing you standing here in front of me, such a strong and thoughtful young man, I think I have his answer. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Tessa, I know the last couple of days have been... hated. I'm up for a fresh start if you are, but it's not really up to me. Tyler? I'm done losing people. And if we can't let people grow, then what the hell kind of chance do we have? Thank you. Both of you. Kids, I never knew your mother's whole story, but it was obviously very painful. She always said you two were the only good luck she'd ever had. I'm going to try harder to forgive her. I hope you can as well. If you two are in town tomorrow, come by the cafe. Lunch is on me. There gonna be coconut cake on the menu? You know, I think there just might be. I'll see you two tomorrow then. We'll be there. Come on. Right, 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 right. So it's all coming out now then, isn't it? Eh? Now people are deciding to tell us the bloody truth, but it makes me wonder what we got in store for chapter three. <laughs> Very much looking forward to that. But for now, what we're going to do is just follow Alison. There's a little bench she's going to sit on just to the right up here. A couple of benches. We'll have a sit on, have another chat. And then we basically are going to go back to the house where we have a little surprise in store for us. Back that book I borrowed six months ago. Not a bad view, right? Yeah. I get now why they put cemeteries in nice spots. Takes a little bit of the sting off. Listen, I know this has been hard. I'm really grateful you saw it through with me. Fireweed was great, but there was no one really there for me like that. You know, you're the only one. Hey, brothers and sisters, right? But it's been way more brothers than sisters lately, which is why I'm trying to say thank you. You really don't have to. You saved my life, Allison. Only for you to end up locked up in fireweed for the rest of your childhood. Wait, are you still blaming yourself for that? 
Don't. It was my choice. It's just... I stole your life, Tyler. And then I totally wasted it. That's not true. You're on your way to Denali. Michael's gonna be a famous chef. And, and what am I doing? Nothing. Nothing. You've been working on that accounting degree. And your art's good. Really good. Stop putting yourself down. As soon as we figure this shit out, we're gonna sell the house. And you're gonna go to Juno. You're gonna kick ass. You make it sound so easy. No. We never had a shot at easy. But we always pull through, right? Yeah. You're right. Hey. Wherever Ranger Tyler ends up next, he better come down from the hills to visit us city folk every now and then. You hear? For sure. And anyway, it's not gonna be for a while. We've got time. Oh yeah, of course. We do. So I guess we know the story now, huh? Marianne was done with Delos. Delos was done with her. Maybe she was too proud, but... She worked so hard for so long, and when she reached the end of her rope, no one was there to help her. Not even Tessa. Or Eddie. And when she heard social services was coming, she... She... Gave up. But killed her kids? Really? I don't know. It still feels like there's something missing. Right? You're never gonna understand what was going through her mind. I'll bet even she didn't. It's probably always gonna feel that way. Oh, I'm gonna fall asleep the second I hit the couch. You better rally. We still have to do some cleaning before bed. Uh, do we have to? Hey, whoever packs the most gets the big couch tonight. Shit. Allison. I'll get the fire extinguisher. Stay there. I got it. I know I said surprise, but I didn't say it was a good surprise. So, <laughs> somebody's tried burning down the barn for some reason. Could this be a hate thing, or is somebody hiding something a little more sinister? We shall soon find out. But for now, this is where we are getting collectible number five. So ignore Allison, ignore all the bits of burning building and everything. Go into this sort of back room right here. Go to the left, and you can already see the collectible is on the sort of bottom shelf. So examine it, but you can't pick it up yet until Tyler finishes. So as soon as he is finished, then we can pick it up, and that will be... All the missable achievements done and all five collectibles in this chapter done as well. Brilliantly done. And in fact, we are literally coming up to the end of the game now. So we've just got literally one or two minutes of 
tiny, tiny, tiny investigating, have a look at a few memories, and then it is cutscenes for the rest of it. But there are all five collectibles. So we all assume that there is going to be a collectible-related achievement in the next chapter. But we shall wait. So for now, go and have a look and examine. Again, you can have a look around at things, but the main one we're going for is the cracked floorboard. And as she says, there's a little box underneath, and the floorboards are looking new, so there's obviously something in there which our mystery man did not want us to find. Hmm. Where could we possibly find a tool to do that? As we've seen in chapter one, Tyler is not that strong to rip up floorboards, so go in the back room, go to the right, take the crowbar, the very conveniently placed crowbar on the floor. We're going to use that to rip up the box. Now, this basically there is a code for this box, and again, you'd have to do a sort of a little, uh, little bit of looking around and everything. Have a look in the book of goblins to take a look. Again, I'm not really too sure on the puzzles. I'm sorry. But I do have the code for you. It's 130. So, you know, we'll just crack on with it. Well, I only know one person who'd bother to decorate a storage box like this. Marianne. Let's open it. What's that there? Some kind of carving. Three digits. Any ideas? Mm. Marianne was never really a numbers kind of person. So, 130 is the code. Once we have a look in here, have a look at these letters. Because things now begin to take a very, very interesting turn. And it soon becomes clear why our mystery man wanted to burn said box in the first place. Fuck. That's rough. This this guy tried to push Mary in to get an abortion. Even though she wanted to keep us. Guessing she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. everything. What the hell? So, Marianne hid a box under the barn. A box full of letters from our deadbeat dad. And a decade later, some guy comes along, trashes the barn, and tries to destroy the box. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yep. That guy had an affair with Marianne, and he just tried to torch the evidence. He must have heard we were clearing out the house. He was worried we'd find it. You know, I... I can't shake the feeling I've seen him here before. So like I said then, there is not a lot left to do here. All we're going to be doing is just taking a look at some memories, follow the sort of fairly sort of obvious path down, and then that is basically the end of the game. So enjoy these memories. Things never quite seem what they appear when you first see them. Good life lesson that is as well. I'm full of top beans, me. T top f full of top life advice. If I can actually get my words out. Uh. Do you know what happens down there? That's the thing. I'm not sure I do. The Mad Hunter. Was someone here that night? In the woods? No. It was just... I, I saw... Who the hell did I actually see? The Mad Hunter! What? No. That... That was the Mad Hunter. What? What are you talking about? That night, I thought I saw the Mad Hunter in the woods, but I guess it was just some asshole. Some asshole who just fucking stood there and watched while our mother chased me with a shotgun. 
Do you think it was the same guy? Maybe. I mean, it had to be him, right? They were wearing the same fishing gear. Unless everyone who wants to mess with us is coordinating outfits. And wait, he was here once before, wasn't he? A few days before Marianne died? Maybe? Hold on, do you feel that? Trail ends here. It looks like he jumped into the gully. Hey, are there footsteps on the other side? Yeah, that must be where he climbed out. Well, he's long gone. Tyler, not there. Our mother fought with someone on the dock, about us. We need to know if it was the same guy. But what if it's not that memory? What if it's... I can't go through that again. We have to take that chance. But do we really? I mean, someone just tried to burn our barn down. Yeah, and that means we've got to be close to something. I'm not going on that dock. Just one more time, please. There's always just one more. Every time it seems like we're done with this, something new pops up. What if this is the only chance to figure out who our father is? Then we go on living our lives without him, just like we always have. Come on, we need to know the truth. For her. What if I don't want to know the truth, huh? Did you ever consider that? No. You just push and push and- You have to take responsibility for your part in Marianne's death. What? How? How? How can you say that to me? I didn't. But I, I did, right? Earlier, to Eddie. But I, I swear I didn't just say that to you. So we can't even trust our own voices now? God, I, I don't know. Allison. I'll do it. Let's go. But for these last two memories then, just keep pressing and holding A. It may seem like you're struggling to remember, because you are, but all you got to do is just keep your finger on the A button and you will get there eventually. So don't let go. Don't let go. Ouch! Watch it! You're stepping on my foot! Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet! I don't want mom to catch us out of bed. I told you, I told you that would happen. We almost had it though. That was us watching Marianne fight with that guy. Try to focus on him, all right? Don't think about anything else. I don't owe you anything. You've been a little... all over the place lately. All over the place? I've just been trying to survive. If you want to make sure I don't get desperate, you could help us out. Lend me some money. What happened? Why did it stop? I can't, Tyler. But we were so damn close. I'm sorry, but I'm done. That's it? You're just giving up, just like that? You can't do this. We owe her. Marianne is gone, Tyler. And nothing we do is gonna change that. Don't go, please. You can't keep running from this alley, or it's only gonna get worse. I don't own.
Ouch! Watch it! You're stepping on my foot! Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet! We don't want Mom to catch us out of bed. There's no money. I've never asked you for anything, but right now they need you. It's not gonna happen. I've got everything I need to nail your ass in that barn. And just what do you think happens after that? <sighs> what do you mean? Well, if those kids have a father, you really think there's a court out there that'll let you keep them? No! You have no claim to my children! Get the hell off my property, now! If you ever come back here, I'm going to kill you! Allison... So now things are really taking an interesting turn. Very, very much looking forward now to chapter three, the final one, so we could finally see what the hell did happen to Marianne. But that is that then for chapter two, guys and gals. So again, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this second chapter journey with me. We've all loved it. Again, take a look at all the, uh, the choices and everything that you made. But again, yeah, so thanks so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope you've enjoyed the game and the guides that I've put up so far. I certainly enjoyed it. Um, if you did like it, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a look at all my socials as well. I'm obviously, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I'm even on Patreon now as well. So all the links will be provided in the description below if you want to check them out. A uh, big massive shout out to TimG84 for his brilliant continued support on Patreon. Thank you so much again. Really, really much appreciated. But that's that then, guys and gals. So I shall see you September 10th. Yes, chapter 3. Let's do this. See you in the next one anyway, guys and gals. Big love. Let's go.